Hello, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add texture to your animated type. Here's what we'll be making. Let's get to it. First, I'll get rid of everything except for the animated textures so we can start from scratch. These textures are just some simple animated circles, lines, and dots, and are included in the free source file. Let's make a new comp and call it TextureMat01. We'll write texture using Boomerang with Font Manager. Let's bring it down a bit so it's more or less centered. Now, let's make another comp and call it Texture Mat 02. Write texture again and use the same value for the Y position. And repeat those steps one more time for Texture Mat 03. Now, in Texture Mat 01, create a black solid and move it to the background. Select the controller layer and set the first color to white and the other two to black. This will create a luma mat, which we can use to isolate only one color of the animated typeface. Let's do the same for the other two comps. On Texture Mat 02, we'll make color 2 white. And in number 3, we'll make color 3 white. We need to create one more comp to bring it all together. Let's name it Texture Composite. Get everything in there and drag the textures right underneath the texture mats. Now, select the textures and set the track mat to Luma Mat. There we go. Animated type with animated textures. Every texture is now looking at the layer above. When it's black, it's fully transparent. When it's white, it's fully opaque. Now, if you're like me, you're slightly bothered by the fact that the T's and E's look exactly the same. Let's fine tune that a bit. Let's go into Texture Mat 01, select the second T, and turn on Use Own Settings. Now we can individually color the T. Instead of making color 1 white, we'll make color 2 white. And we'll do the same for the second E. Let's save a step by copying the controller settings and paste it on the E. Now for the other T's and E's, we'll do the same thing. For Texture Mat 02, the white color should move to slot 3. And for Texture Mat 03, it moves to slot 1. If we go back to the main comp, we'll see the T and E now have a different distribution of color. Avoiding repetition like that makes it feel a little less systematic, which is a nice touch. This technique works for every animated typeface. The textures I've used are in the source file, so you can follow along. But, of course, it's more fun to use your own. Here's another example of animated type with layer mats. Here we are using an animated typeface to distort whatever you have in your background. I'll delete everything so we can start from scratch. Let's create a new comp and call it Main Mat. I'm going to use Font Manager to type Glitch with Type 36. Now I'll create a second comp and call it Secondary Mat. Write Glitch again.
and repeat the steps one more time for a comp called strokes math. Like the previous example, make the first color white and the rest black. And create a black solid to go in the background. Let's also center the type a bit better. Let's do the same for the other two comps, but with the white color in the second and third slot. Now, let's create another comp to combine everything. Oh, almost forgot. We need another comp for our image. There we go. Let's drag the four comps we just made into the composite comp. Image goes at the bottom. First, create a new solid to color our main type layer. Put it underneath the main mat and set the track mat to luma mat. Now, create another solid for the stroke color. I'll sample a color from the trees in this case. Drag it underneath strokes mat and also set the track mat to luma mat. Now for the fun part. I'm going to duplicate the image comp and set the track mat to luma mat again. So it samples alpha from the white parts of the secondary mat. Let's solo both image comps for a better view. I'll bring up the position by hitting P on my keyboard and nudge it over a bit. You can see that image is distorted a bit based on our secondary mat. Let's have a quick preview with all layers on. We can take it up a notch if we duplicate the image layer and the strokes mat. Put them in the right order and make the strokes mat really big. I'm going to center the position of the image again. Instead, we'll rotate the image 180 degrees. Now it will show the image upside down based on the visibility of the strokes mat. If we turn on continuous rasterization, we'll get our crisp edges back. As a final touch, we can slightly scale up our image. Let's do that inside the image comp. And there we go. If you want to change the background, simply change the image in the image comp and everything will be updated. I'll quickly darken this new image a bit. And in the main comp, I'll change the stroke color to something more suitable. Have a look at our setup in the free source file, but please mess around with this technique as much as you can to really make it your own. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.